we were all, I think, ready for the fact that we would have to leave. But it's just really hard, you know, to leave everything behind and, and just flee. So just day to day, how did it look and feel different in the streets of Donetsk? So if you can imagine a playground where lots of little kids playing with their moms and grandmas. But then you see art men just walking around them, sitting on the benches, smoking cigarettes. That was a very surreal scene to see, and that's where I don't want my kids to see. And we left like in one hour. Basically just packing fast. I guess it was me and my husband's goal to make sure that we do everything that hockey does not end with us fleeing. War erupts in southeast Ukraine. Russian-backed militants claim the region is part of Russia. Ukraine citizens are caught in the middle. 9,000 people are killed. About 1.4 million are left homeless. In the city of Donetsk, near the Russian border, there is a symbolic loss. The local arena is looted and burned, allegedly by pro-Russian separatists. The arena was home to H.C. Donbass, the lone Ukrainian representative in Russia's continental hockey league. About 14 fire engines attempted to extinguish the blaze, which completely engulfed the arena owned by Boris Kolesnikov. Boris Kolesnikov is a former vice prime minister of Ukraine. He became a billionaire thanks to his political connections and thriving investments in the steel industry and confectionery business. And he's crazy about hockey. Kolesnikov's love of the game crystallized in 1972, when as a 10-year-old boy, he watched the historic hockey clash between Canada and the Soviet Union. After the Soviet Union collapsed and Ukraine became an independent nation, Kolesnikov saw an opportunity to make his new country a hockey power. He spearheaded a plan to build 60 new arenas throughout Ukraine. The showpiece was to be this 15,000-seat arena in Donetsk. Kolesnikov then purchased pro team HC Donbass. And Ukrainian star player Ruslan Fedotenko, a two-time Stanley Cup winner, was to be his marquee attraction on a team with a $30 million payroll a dramatic increase from what the previous owner had spent on players. We are taking the, his private jet to uh, Lugansk. He was explaining, you know, his goal, his vision. It was uh, amazing, it was ambitious, and I was uh, humbled he wanted to put me in his plans. It will be a great stimulus and motivation for young hockeyists who will see themselves in the future. Топовыми игроками, как КХЛ, так и ВНХЛ. 
But the war put an end to the dream. Construction on the new arena stopped. Fedotenko returned to the United States. After the arena fire, the KHL and Kolesnikov agreed the war made it too risky to play hockey in Donetsk. Donbass was suspended indefinitely from playing in the Russian league. Donetsk then lost the rights to host a Tier 2 World Championship. Eventually, the hockey arena fell under the control of pro-Russian forces. Donbass was forced out of Donetsk. How did you feel watching the eastern part of Ukraine so paralyzed by violence? How did that make you feel? Surreal, actually. You know, just see uh, some of the footage or even the footage of the airport. It's like a shots like from the moon. Boris was building, uh, it probably was nine months away from the brand new hockey arena there. I was uh, talking to uh, people who live in Donetsk there right now and uh, they said the kids are trained now. They, when they hear the whistle uh, of the bombs or the shelling, they train every day to get under the table, to get to some shelter. And that's the reality for them. How important is Boris Kolesnikov to Ukrainian hockey? I think it's probably not going to be hockey at all. Instead of shutting down Donbass, Kolesnikov shifted his team to the Ukrainian Hockey League and moved it 90 minutes north to the smaller town of Drishkivka. For context, imagine if the Calgary Flames picked up and relocated to Medicine Hat. Plesnikov's team generates just $400 per game from ticket sales. He covers the cost to produce TV broadcasts of all his team's home games. Profits have vanished. But Kolesnikov says he hasn't even thought about folding his club. I want to know why you love playing hockey and who your favorite hockey players are. Come back to our team, uh, Donbass management. They pay for the uh, expenses for the kids in the Donbass area. They bring them up to during Drushkovka. Every day they practice. They watch us, they're always they're smiling. So when they see us come into the rink in the morning, they're like, hi, hi. <laughs> kind of, uh, it brings uh, happiness to us too, because we see the kids that want to play in the situation that's going on right now. They still come into the rink and they practice. You know, Sergey, this might not be the best hockey team you've ever played on, yeah. but maybe it's the most important one. That could be too. Ah. Professional. The Misha, what's your memory of Donetsk? Когда ты закрываешь глаза и вспоминаешь Донецк, что ты видишь? 
Ну, во-первых, я вижу свой дом, как э, мы хорошо там жили. First of all, I see our home, our apartment, and how well it fell there. It's been two years since Misha Shelichenko and his family fled Donetsk. They now live in Kiev, where Misha has become one of Ukraine's most promising young hockey stars. When are you happiest? When I score goals. Misha's success in hockey is a rare source of joy and hope for his parents. It also stands as evidence that Boris Kolesnikov's efforts have not been in vain. It's because of him that Misha and his family, and many other players' families, were able to relocate to Kiev and start over. Kolesnikov pays for all hockey expenses and 30% of their apartment costs. For other families, it's rumored he covers as much as 80%. Can you just explain what his contributions have meant? Well, I think everything that you are seeing behind us and here, that's all that, that he's done for, for the kids. Because without him, there is no other hockey team in Ukraine that has the level of support, the level of funding, and that offers so much perspectives for the little ones. They still continue to do what they love, and that's all for Boris Kolesnikov and his help.